So welcome to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Dr. Ray Rose coming to us from Texas, although I'm not sure where the virtual background is. Uh, I'm Actually, it could very well be a picture taken out of his house because I know he lives right along the coast. Yep. So, um, yeah, that's a, one of our beaches. Very good. So thanks for joining us today, Ray. Um, can we start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, first off, it's not doctor, but that's okay. Um, I've, I'm old. I've been a teacher. I've been a school administrator. I've been a counselor. I was a civil rights specialist before I started dealing with online learning. But I've been dealing with online learning since before you have, Mike, because we, I was part of the team that created the virtual high school, which was the first online learning program in the United States. So I've been doing this for a while. And most recently, I've been focused on the issue of digital accessibility. Very good. And I apologize about the doctor thing. Ray is one of the few people that gives me a hard time about things. So I just assumed that uh, that he was better credentialed than what I was. But uh, so um, I guess in that, I guess it's working on about 25 years now of, yeah. of time you've spent in the field. Um, you've picked up things along the way. I know you guys did a lot of great training with the original virtual high school folks working with people that had no background in online learning. And we've got a lot of teachers right now that find themselves in the same situation, no or little background with online learning, being asked to shift into this remote instruction environment uh, very quickly. Um, do you have any advice that you would give to them in terms of how to make this uh, a little bit uh, easier or more manageable for them? Well, I'm gonna start with something that I haven't heard any of your other speakers say. And it's a piece that I think is real important. And that is that you don't start off making an assumption that every one of your students has a computer and internet access at home. And even for some of those that do have a computer at home, mom and dad may also be home given where we are in the environment, in the situation. And they may be having to use the computer for work. There may be one computer and there may be a set of siblings all vying for the computer. So to put together a program of instruction where the assumption is that students, all students have this miracle access to computers is very, very dangerous. And in fact, can create a situation where based on the assumptions a teacher makes, they are intention unintentionally denying some student access to their instruction. So my starting point in terms of recommending things for the teacher and this crazy remote learning world that we're in today is talk to your students. Make a phone call to every one of your students and find out what kind of connectivity they have if they have any. I know in at least one community here in Texas, a little further south, the teachers have made an understanding that there are students without connectivity and they're providing packets of information on a weekly basis to, for the parents to pick up so st students can pass in work and get new work. And the teachers are doing that. So assuming, and I've had conversations with people who are putting out the resources. Yes, there are a myriad of technology-based resources that could be used for instruction. But if you've got kids that can't get access to it, do you really want to use it? And then I'm going to anticipate your next question because I've seen the <laughs> other videos. When we're talking about what can parents do, I think the issue there is actually communications. And I sort of led into this with the last comment. Teachers should be calling the parents to find out what the connectivity is to establish a line of communications. Parents need to be able to contact the teachers if their kid is having problems, if their kid is using, okay, let's play with this one. We're using Zoom. Not every, <laughs> we've been using, we started using Zoom in our church and we did a service. And there were some people who had very, very hard time just getting the technology to work. 
So you cannot assume, even though Zoom is supposed to be very easy, there's a rich feature set behind it. And depending on how it's set, how you're intending to use it, parents may need help. They need to be able to know where to go. If their kid is having problems with the processes, with the instruction, there needs to be a way for the parent to get help. And that's phone call to the teacher. Teachers should be watching to see how the, their students are doing and making decisions whether their decisions about instruction are actually meeting their instructional goals and help preparing kids. Very good. Well, um, one of the things I know Ray's background is uh, very involved with special education and online learning, and I know he posts information regularly about that on his blog, and he's done several presentations on it that I know are often linked into his blog. So in the information that's going to be below this video, I'll have a link to his blog there so that for folks that do have children that have special needs, uh, raise information are great resources and things that if your teacher isn't already aware of them, um, parents, I would recommend when you do that communication with the teacher that Ray has suggested that you push them to Ray's blog to get some advice and guidance on some of the ways in which they can accommodate uh, your child during this remote instruction uh, environment. Thanks for the plug, Michael. I've, I'm in fact working on a blog post, but trying to put all the links in and stuff, it has not been quite as fast as they sometimes are. Well, perfect. And uh, so we'll be looking for that. And uh, so thank you, Ray. Uh, this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning today with Mr. Ray Rose. Ray Rose. <laughs>